Uh, let's ca uh, call the meeting to order at 4.31. District of Chetwin Council, January 14th, 2019. O opening statement. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. I have one item to, uh, before we adopt the agenda, to add, uh, CR3, the mayor's report. I would need a motion for CR3, Mayor's Report. So moved. Second. Favor? Carry. Okay, adoption of the minutes, or the agenda, excuse me. Okay, carry. Okay, minutes of the regular meeting, December 10th, 2018. So moved. Carry. Uh -oh. Okay, we got a delegation uh, presentation. Jaden. We need to adopt those two. First off, I'd like to say thank you for having me out here today. My name is Jaden. I am a community paramedic here in Chatwin with the BHC Ambulance Service. And I'm just going to come out and give you guys a little bit of information about what the community paramedic is and what we are doing here in Chatwin. Uh, so today I'll just give you a brief overview of the community paramedic program. I'll introduce you to myself and the other community paramedic that is in town. And I'll give you a few little ideas and or a little bit of information on what we are doing and then hopefully I'll be able to answer a few questions for you guys. I was told I have 10 minutes so I'm going to rush through it a little bit. <coughs> um, so for the community paramedic overview, uh, community paramedic over uh, was developed to help stabilize staffing in rural remote British Columbia. Uh, I am kind of a, a, set, uh, a testament to that. Uh, by taking this position in Chatwin, I actually brought in me and my uh, significant other, who is also a paramedic, bringing two primary care paramedics to Chatwin instead of just one. And then the other primary care paramedic came from another community to be in Chatwin as well. Um, we are also looking to bridge the health service delivery gaps in Chatwin. Um, we do this by uh, collaborating with the uh, local health authority uh, and, and everyone involved in patient care or in the community itself and uh, identify any gaps and we work to try and fill those. An example of that is working with the um, home care nurses. We've been working with uh, Soto as well as in town here. And what we do is we do a lot of education for the patients after they've been discharged from the hospital, freeing up nurses to have more time to do um, more medical stings and stuff such as wound, wound um, treatments and, and wound care and whatnot and uh, delivering medication and everything like that. So just freeing up more time for them is something that we have done so far in, in Chapman here. So um, for the community paramedic program, our, um, our target audience or our population profile is uh, the older adults, age 65 and older, living with chronic illnesses at home, um, such as heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, diabetes, they could be at risk of falls, and they just could use support with palliative approach to care. We're still working on that in Chetwin. It's not quite available yet, but it's coming. Um, 
So we'll go into these people's houses and we'll work with them to get a little bit healthier and enable them to start taking responsibility for their own health. This helps them let them stay in their homes longer if that's what they want. So to get into the community paramedic program, uh, they have to be referred to by either a primary care nurse or a physician as a referral program and then they send it off to us so we evaluate, see what we can do and then we meet with the patient. Go from there. Uh, this is no cost to the patient or the community. It's all through BC Ambulance. Um, as of now, we're all over British Columbia. We have 26 communities in, B in northern BC here, uh, equating to 22.65 full-time equivalency, um, with 28 of them being regular part-time positions, which means that's, that's 28 positions at 0.5, enabling us, myself, I still work emergency car on the side, so that's what the, the goal of that was by meeting, by doing that. These are some of the communities, uh, these are all the communities that we are in now. Uh, we're still adding more as, as we go. Uh, so I'll introduce you to myself again. I'm Jaden. I, I'm working three days a week now, Wednesday through Friday. My counterpart is Samantha. She's actually off on medical leave right now. Um, I don't know if anyone has seen us around in the community yet or not, uh, but she's not around right now, unfortunately. Um, so we are actually putting in a temporary position for her to come, that's still down the line. But uh, yeah, we are supported by Kathy Scott, who's my regional training officer. So she comes down, she's been doing this for three years or so, um, since the program really got started. So she's kind of my trainer and helps me out with questions. Um, I'm also the unit chief, so I'm also my own support in Chetwin here, so I kind of bounce ideas off myself, I guess. Um, and then Rick, my manager as well, uh, he's in He's uh, up in Dawson Creek, and I ask him questions all the time, and he helps me out as well. Um, so one of the other things besides just patient care that we do is we also do uh, community health promotion and awareness. So I don't know, I haven't, I've seen a few of you, I see some familiar faces, but I set up at uh, PharmaSave every month, once a month so far, and I just do vitals checks, and I, and I give information out to anyone who stops by and asks questions. So that's just something that we're doing to get into the community and try to get education out to the community. There's multiple different um, avenues that we can take on that. For example, for some examples is different like childcare seats and stuff like that that some people do. Uh, we also support uh, primary care nurses in, what, in the clinics that they do. Um, so we'll go with them and, and, and help with the clinical aspect of it, just taking vitals and, and um, writing things down for them. Uh, we, for an example of this is we were at the, uh, at the rec center on Friday and answering questions and trying to get people to go to the community more often and, and staying and living a healthier life. Um, and a big part of our job is going in, into people's, and doing, people's houses and doing home visits. Uh, so we'll go and meet with patients sometimes once a week, sometimes twice, uh, depending on what they need. And we'll, we'll go in, we'll talk to them about their medication, we'll check their blood pressures, really just see how they're doing at that point. And we'll evaluate from there and try to increase their, their standard of living over the time that we're meeting with them. <clears throat> so we schedule weekly or sometimes monthly, or depending on what they need again, visits and we go in with them. Uh, we help them to stay connected with their family, uh, with their, between their family and their doctor and the nurses, everything like that. We, we, talk with the nurses once a week. I attend the, the uh, weekly discharge planning meeting at the hospital. I'm going to the ITPs now. Um, and that's where we can bring the information back to the doctors. It's another set of eyes into the, into the patient's house for the healthcare team. Um, so that, like I said earlier, we're trying to, to encourage these patients to take control of their own uh, health and really take more responsibility for them so that they can live healthier lives and uh, stay at home longer. Uh, we also check in with their medications. Um, lots of times people get prescribed um, an abundance amount of medication, so we'll work with the pharmacist and we'll actually try to reduce that with the doctors and everything like that as well. Uh, we also go in and do home safety checks, fall safety hazards, and uh, if, if we feel that, the, that we are not uh, suited for that position or not quite appropriate for that patient, we'll recommend them or refer them to the appropriate 
medical aspect. So an occupational therapist if they need something in their house type thing, for an example. Um, also, sh a shoulder to cry on, I'll say. Uh, people, uh, as you get uh, older adults, uh, can sometimes really feel isolated. So uh, going into their homes and building that relationship with them is another huge aspect of our job. And uh, uh, we listen to them and we uh, get assistance when they need it, or sometimes that's all they need is a friend. Um, some of our stakeholders, uh, Northern Health, uh, Provincial, Health Authority, uh, Provincial Health Services Authority, uh, First Nations Health Service Authority. Um, these are all the people that have, have helped build the, the community paramedic program so far. Um, if you'd like any more information, you can go to bcehs.ca and then click on community or services, or you can email community paramedicine at bcehs. I also have a card if anyone is interested for my direct email as well. Thank you very much. Any questions? I just have a quick question. Um, what, on the average, how often do you visit your patients? Um, usually, it's once a week. Okay. Yeah, and I have about twelve patients right now. Good. Good. I do have one question. Um, so, do you find that this is cut back on the ambulance calls? Um, I know there's stats out there that they're compiling. Um, I wouldn't say it's cut down on 911 calls, but I would say it's cut down on the repeating calls. So for example, if, if we have established a report with someone who is continuously calling 911, and I have a few examples in my head right now, um, by going and, and just being that person for them, you know, someone to talk to, they won't call 911 as much. And that's okay. one of the, the goals, right? They won't be going to the hospital as much. Um, I know when I was originally asked about questions and answers, they were asked, uh, I was asked if you guys could ask questions about BC Ambulance itself as well. So uh, Rick and I are here if you guys have any questions about BC Ambulance and the community as well. Yeah, does anybody in the audience have any questions? Awesome. Okay, thanks for your uh, professionalism and uh, continue with the good work. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, thank you. Bylaws, uh, item B1, District of Chetwin Revenue uh, Anticipation Bylaw number 1085, 2018, requires adoption. Motion to adopt. Sure. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Under committee's reports and Leon's uh, reports, uh, we adopted uh, C1 through 3. We need adoption for CR4 administration report. All those in favor? That's Carol's uh, report. Yeah, and we've, we've adopted the one through CR1, two, three. Okay, and we just needed to adopt uh, CR4, and we just did that. All those in favor? Carry. Okay. 
Okay, under discussion, DI1, the invitation for the Roundtable Committee Chair re AME's Mineral Explora Exploration Roundup. I'll make that motion that Council authorize the Mayor or alternate to attend the AME's Mineral Exploration Roundup 2019 in Vancouver, BC on January 28th to the 31st, 2019. I'll we'll second that. All those people. If I could just speak. discussion. Yeah, um, I believe mayor and council have prior uh, engagements that week. It's um, yeah, it's the um. I don't know that anybody would be available to attend that. Yes, you're, you're correct. That will be uh, attending this here on uh, the roundup, but the council will attend the- uh, You will attend that. Yeah. Oh, excellent, thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? <clears throat> okay, all those in favor? Carried. Does that find my spot here? DI2, Local Government Leadership Academy, 2019 Elected Officials Seminar. Yeah, I'll make that recommendation that Council authorize all Council members to attend the Local Government Leadership Academy 2019 Elected Officials Seminar, January 30th to February 1st, 2019, in Prince George, BC. I'll second that. All those in favor? Carry. DI3, North Central Local Government Association. Uh, 2019 NCLGA AGM and Conference. I would make that motion that council authorize all council members to attend the 2019 North Central Local Government Association AGM and Convention, May 7th to 10th, 2019 in Williams Lake. I'll second that. All in favor? DI4, email from Forest, Forests and Land and Natural Resource Operation dated December 19, 2018, uh, Northeastern Roundtable Meeting. I can make that motion that the council authorize the mayor or an alternate to attend the mayor, oh, to, to attend the mayor or alternate to attend the Northeast Roundtable Meeting in 2019. I'll second that. In favor? Carry. DI5, email from Peace River Regional District dated December 14, 2018. 14-097 <coughs> Brewster referral. I would make that motion to receive for information. Second. All those in favor? Carry. You know the correspondence. I would council like to deal with this as accepted from C C one to C eight as received. Second. Carry. Do we need the information now? Information I'll make a motion to receive. I'll second that. Hey, Gary. 
Report for action. 100 year local government. I would make that motion that council authorize staff to proceed with selecting a tree to plant in a location recommended by staff and hold a commemorative tree planting ceremony in recognition of the local government profession and ongoing um, commitment to the community. I'll second that. All those in favor? Carried. <coughs> so opportunity for the public input. Temporary use permit number 02-2018-2018 Flynn Camp and Catering Inc. Public consultation. This portion of the regular council meeting is set aside to allow for public comment on the purpose temporary use permit number 02-2018 Flynn Camp, a flight camp and catering inc. This is not, excuse me, thanks. This is not a formal public hearing process, but rather an informal process. I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and residence, residential or business address and then provide council with their comments. Uh, there have been three letters received in opposition of the proposed temporary use development variants, which uh, are included with the agenda with the exception of the second and third letter, letter, letter which is available at the front of the room. I will now ask if there is any, pre if any presentation either in favor of or in opposition to the proposed permit. Are there any further comments? We need any comments? And I must remind people, this is not a football game, a hockey game. There's no cheering or booing allowed. So we will make the person speaking comfortable as possible. I'm Tasha Shepard, 5200 North Access Road, Chetwin, BC, from the Pomeroy Inns and Suites. Uh, with me is Darcy Chamberless, Regional Manager for the Inns and Suites here in town. And I am speaking in opposition to the camp. Uh, currently, right now, we have two camps already approved in town, 416 person capacity between both camps. Uh, the consent previously um, it has been noted that the camps will not pull any revenues from or room nights from the local hotels, motels. However, that is not the case. If you look at uh, 2018, for instance, versus 2017, when we first started, the camp approval in 2017-2018, we were down $100,000 as of 2018 compared to what we were in 2017. Uh, most recently here we had a crew who generally stays either with me or the Lakeview that is currently staying in one of the camps. I double checked this morning, they are still there while the hotels are sitting at 40% up. So them not pulling any business from us is something that you can look at the numbers to see where it's actually coming from. Right now, uh, everybody involved, camps, hotels, motels, we all have under our belts a year of revenues that can make an informed decision of council, the future of camps in Chetwin. Um, for right now, I, there, I don't see anywhere where we need an additional camp in this town. Um, to go through, I just have a couple things here for, uh, I know there's some projects happening in town, North Motney Pipeline Project, they have three camps as per the September 4th council meeting. They had stated that they were having three camps outside of the municipality. Uh, Crew Energy, they currently have camps in their project areas. The Coastal Gas Link, which is, uh, sorry, the Coastal Gas Link was the one that was presented here on September 4th, not the North Motney. North Mountain currently has a camp in their project area as well. Um, the BC Hydro Transmission Line, Site C, 
they have a camp in their area. They also are currently contracted to local contractors either here in Chetwin or in Fort St. John as well. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to see here. Yeah, I think right now it's, I'm curious if there, why there's a need for the additional camps. Are the current camps full? Are the hotels full? What, what is the request based upon? Anybody have any questions? Is he here? Dave, are you here? Okay, if you want to keep that question in mind or do you want to address it uh, immediately, what is your, uh, what would you uh, like to do right now? Would you like to answer that question right now, or would you like to, uh, okay, if you uh, don't mind? Yes. I'm Dave Milner, with Flight Camp and Catering, 4414, 44th Avenue, there's a lot of fours. Um, the reason we made our application was actually for an expansion of what we already have. It wasn't for a second camp, but unfortunately the neighboring property wasn't the same property, so we had to make an application for a separate camp, which it's not going to be. It's just gonna be bunched together as one. There'll be no more kitchen than already there. We're not putting in any more facilities except rooms, right? Um, but we work closely with Soto First Nation, with Forever Green, their ECDEV department, and they told us, and I've had meetings already with uh, CNRL, they're gonna be requiring 637 beds this summer. Spruce Ridge is a go. That pipeline's gonna go. There's gonna be over 400 people there. Coastal Gas Link will be, I understand they're gonna have camp, but in the meantime, until their camps are constructed, their people that are actually building their camps for them will be staying with us <coughs> in our camps as part of a deal with Soto First Nations. We do a lot of our work through that. Um, what else can I tell you? I know that there's been hockey teams and volleyball teams and stuff that have had a hard time right now trying to get accommodations in town, which I've been informed that was on Facebook just in the last week here. Um, I don't know. We only want to put this camp in if the town is busting at the seams again. Like, I am not going to mobilize a camp into here and set it up and build it. They will come. That isn't how it works. If the town, and I saw it already once when Ledcorn and Serreras were here, there was no place to go. There was people camping on the lawns. There was people going to Hudson's Hope. There was people going to Dawson Creek and out to uh, Ground Bridge to that huge camp to stay because there wasn't the accommodations here. All I'm essentially trying to do is get our ducks in a row for when it happens again. I don't have a six month waiting period and I can act on it and the business will stay in town rather than ship it away again, right? That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not going to put a camp in unless it's, there's a need for it. I wouldn't do that. So I have a question for him. Sure. Yeah. Um, so if for some reason this doesn't pass tonight, how much of a turnaround do you need to, if you wanted to come back and ask for it, for it again? <laughs> like, if, I'm just saying if, if for some reason this doesn't get approved tonight, right. you always have the right to come back and do it again. Right? Yes. How, how much turnaround do you need? You said six months is what? Well, that's essentially what this draws out to, right? Every time that we do this, it's a, it's a waiting game like and the thing is, I don't essentially need to be moving forward tomorrow or anytime soon. Like, this is a thing where next May, June, July, if the town starts bursting again, you know, I can't wait six months starting then, right? Right, okay. I just want to have something in place. If it does, if the town needs it, I can do it. If the town doesn't need it, I don't need to do it. You know what I mean? That's where it's at. Any more questions? I have a question. I have a question, but I, it's more directed for staff. If perhaps, you, Clarell, you could clarify what the process is for the application and how long does it actually take from start to finish? Sure. 
If council denies the application tonight, the applicant has to wait six months to reapply. Okay. Um, what's involved when he applies is, first of all, council has to approve the process so that administration can advertise and make sure that the public knows that there's a, an opportunity for public input. So it usually takes two council meetings, one for the process to be approved and then this, another meeting such as tonight for the public input opportunity and then for council to approve or deny. Okay. So two council meetings. Okay, so a month. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I have another question, Alan, I'm sorry. So I, I know it's a huge expense for you to, yes. to do this. Um, I, I guess my thing is, I can't see you doing it if there's not a need to do it. That's right. But is there, I guess, have you got enough proof that it's needed? Like, do you know what, do you know what I'm getting at? Like, I, 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 I definitely know what can happen here. We've, we've seen it once and that was just two pipelines. This pipeline's coming through here. I'm sure some of you know already that's 40 inch pipe and there could be as many as 3,000 men working just on that job alone, right? That's factual. There is uh, Altex doing, well they're staying with us too, right? But we're doing hydro work. There's more hydro work coming. There's, there's more pipelines coming besides this one. And uh, then there's CNRL, right? right? Where, are, where are these people going? I just, I essentially, I guess I just want to have, I want to be ready if it does happen and the town's bursting again. You know, if the town isn't full, there's, there is no point in me doing this, right? And it is a very big expenditure. But we would have to have uh, contracts and agreements through our First Nation partner also, right? So. I just ain't going to build it, and it can't have an open camp, right? I need, I need a contract, right? Right. So what what I'm hearing is that uh, we're looking for futures, just like anything else in the stock market. You're uh, absolutely you're banking on futures, and here we are talking about today, and where uh, right. if uh, if the numbers are right, our town's hurting right now, and uh, if we pro process progress with uh, building or accepting yes. this today, yep. that means you can essentially bring in people today, put them in your camp where we don't have uh, uh, people in our uh, motels and hotels. You know, we, we, we have people that never, pay, pay no. our taxes, pay right. all those throughout the years, yep. and yep. Uh, they're asking us, and as council yep. and uh, mayor, that we. Yep we oblige our our uh, citizens and we have a long-standing relationship with our uh, motels and hotels absolutely and uh, three years with adding 166 to your camp saying that it's not going to uh, uh, say make make any difference or we're just waiting for next year so that they don't get uh, get the volume we, we need the, uh, I guess Laura was on the right uh, right track. How, how much longer can you wait? Or if when we get to the point where we're 100, 110% full, uh, are we going to continue to say that we don't have no room at the end? Right. And this is where some of the, uh, the people in the room are asking. Right. I would look at it as a safeguard essentially for the town, I guess, like uh, if you are that busy and the hotels are stuffed to capacity, where where is everybody going? They're gonna go outside the town and the town's not gonna get the spin off. They'll set up camps wherever, outside our town borders, right? And uh, I'm just trying to have my ducks in a row, I'll say it again, and, and be ready for the influx of people because I honestly believe they're coming. You know, I'm privy to a lot of information that so it'll get as far as our consultation, and you folks get the same consultation. Yep. So you know what's coming, and there's a lot coming. So, and I have no need to put the camp there if it doesn't come, or nor would I. It's a very, very huge expenditure, right? But I'm only, I'm sitting probably at 40% capacity. The other camp is dead. Um, we've been that way for a year at least so our numbers are down big time so yeah. 
and the, the people that we do have, because we're not an open camp, we have contracts through our First Nations partner. And that's part of their consultation, right? And that's how we do business. Yeah. We can't accept the hockey players or the other people coming to town. So that's her in a nutshell. Any uh, more questions or comments? I have one question. What's, uh, what's the total investment in this next phase for you people? It would be $3 million. $3 million? For us to bring it in. So it makes no sense for us to bring it in unless we have a contract from a huge player that would initially, I guess, do the contract through our First Nation partner, right? Through the reserve. So you're confident if you get a approval tonight, you spend the money you're gonna get oh, a return? No. Well, I wouldn't get a return because we wouldn't put it in unless it's gonna be crazy here. And I honestly think it's going to be crazy here for the next yeah. five years. I honestly think there's gonna be a huge influx in this community, so. And I just, I watched last time as everything went to Hudson's Hope and they bust people and they bust them to Ground Birch and they bust them to Dawson Creek and, and there's other businesses in this town that didn't enjoy that spinoff because everybody's gone, right? Excuse me, I have a question. So Dave, what you're referring to uh, when they bust these people to Hudson's yes. Hope and, and when yeah. was that? During the lead corn Sereras pipeline jobs that were here last year. So I'm just wondering at that time when that was happening, was, for instance, the Pomeroy at full capacity? The whole town was full. You couldn't get a room in this town. Thank you. Pardon me? Wasn't that in 2017? Late, late 2017, yeah. Early 2018. Yeah, it was January it kicked. Mm -hmm. So if I could just carry on then. Yeah. Um, so Natasha, uh, it was busy for you then. You were at capacity. You were at full. So 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 when the when the camps were full, you were full, yeah. and that was really the last time you know we had the big uh, occupancy in Chatwin. Uh, at the time that Dave was saying they were full, you were full as well. Okay, so then it, it, it wasn't as busy in chat when, when you were, uh, when your rate, when your um, numbers were down. Like right. <coughs> I'm sorry? Currently. Right. Yes. Yeah, the camps, are, the camps are empty or fairly low Actually, in Actually, my, my camp through that job wasn't full. I didn't get that contract. The contract went to uh, the other camp in town. And so I ran it about 60 to 70 people total okay. throughout that whole thing. I was overflow, I guess, for the town. Yeah. Yeah, just state yes. your name and we'll... Uh, you know, you mentioned that at present you're running at 40%. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm from the state coach in. Yes. Uh, yeah. You're at 8%? 8%. Oh, I'm sorry. So I don't. What, what we would have expected individuals to come and stay with us right now are at 40 yeah. uh, and, and I don't believe you. Oh, no, no. You know, it is no. just facts that, uh, yeah. you know, I have, <clears throat> I have uh, made here I have uh, who you know, at one time located okay, 30 to 40 hours a week and now getting three and four hours. And it's six months, it takes six months for you to get a new application. It's going to last for four years, you know. Give us the opportunity to share some of this. Uh, and, uh, and then yeah. It's four years, you know, you can build it when it starts to get busy. So don't take it away from our you know. I have no intentions of doing that at I all. I'm I just. just, I'm just uh, None at all. The town has to be full before I could move forward, right? And that's, it's just a safeguard I want, trying to get into place, right? I want to, because if all of a sudden July shows up and wow, the town's crazy. Now what? I got six, seven months to wait and then it's not going to be busy. You know, that kind of deal. I just, I'll even go on record saying I will not build this camp until 
the town is full. And only if there's a demand for it, right? And our clients, like, we don't open our doors so somebody can come and check in or do that. We're, like, in this situation, right? Like, like, they don't come to us and say, I'd like a room for the night. That's not what happens. Our, our dealings are done through Soto First Nations. They do as part of their economic benefits package with an oil and gas company or, or whichever company. We want the camp out of that deal, right? That's what we want for compensation. So we come through there and we have a partnership with Soto First Nation. Uh, that's uh, one of the things that happens with uh, partnerships is that uh, yeah. some of the partners recommend that they go to camps because yeah. they are substantially lower than uh, booking them at, a, right. at some uh, motels. Well, a big and I know some is. have corporate rates, yeah. which they try to give to yeah. uh, two companies, yeah. which they, I believe that even if there's two or three that yeah. belong to a company, they will give company right. rates. But if they're recommended that they go to a camp yeah. and you have no say in that. Yeah. So, you know, that, that takes these people out of it. Yeah. It, there's nothing that they can do or say to get them into the right. motels. If there's a camp available and the right. company recommends that they go, then yeah. then we're uh, kind of hooped in the, in the motel and uh, right. hotel area. Right. Um, another big another big issue was uh, feeding people at four and five in the morning. You know, like, there was no place to go but uh, 7-Eleven essentially to get food in the morning, right? And that's uh, that's been brought up a lot too. So, uh, your rates, Dave, have they adjusted since you've been open? What? If anything, they've gone down. Yes. Do they? So are they going down as occupancy drops? No, we've just recently, like I would say a month ago, we we dropped it because we're slow as slow. We're crazy slow at this point in time, but I'm saying down the road here with what I know and what I've been privy to, it's going to be different, right? And like I said, that just my rates don't compete with hotel rates. They don't, they don't choose me like Joe Blow doesn't come in my door and say, I want a room for the night. We can't give them a room. It's got to be through our partnership, right? So. Any more questions? Comments? I just would like to know if there's anybody else in the audience that um, yeah. would like to say something. Hi, can you go to the podium, please, so we can hear? Letty um, with Mama G's Country Kitchen. We just uh, got into the rec center uh, in October. And I just, I was, I also wrote a letter, so I thought I should say something. <laughs> um, I, my letter, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that we want more business and we would be willing to um, accommodate a lot of the people that came in for their food. If it meant uh, five in the morning or late at night, we would like to be able to accommodate. Um, so yeah, that would be one thing that we could help with, um, with the food. And I know uh, Cherry too, um, she would probably like to help. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just, we're, we're trying to grow our business too. And if it does get really busy, we'd like to be a part of it and make sure that we can help. Yeah, so I'm Cherry Kamal from uh, Subway and Domino. So, um, what was said that um, like they brought the like trying to feed people between four and five like we haven't heard anything about it so but if it's something that's been communicated to us like if we like we can we don't have problem because we um, like sometimes the coal mine um, they want us to do like two thirty or four in the morning at Subway or Domino's we do that but again with communication right but about the camp, we, we didn't hear anything about it. It's, nobody likes getting up that early, but the workers probably don't like it either, so we'll try. 
Um, but thank you for, um, sorry I forget your name. Steve. Yeah, I think, I like now listening to you, I think that you're trying to do a really good thing and um, I hope it works out for everybody. But I can, I can see, you know, your, your side for sure and, and it might not even hurt us, I, I don't know, but um, I, I hear your side, I hear, I think it could be good for Chetwin too, so it's hard to say, it's a big decision for sure. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Jesse. Any further comments? I think well, I think we're trying trying to look to the future, like which, which we already did in 2017, and this mm. is where it Well, um, I think we have a new few new projects coming down the pipe in 2019 and 2020, and and it's, and you know we all talk about the projects, but it's just not the projects. We also have Minerals North coming. We also have a huge hockey tournament coming with the Norse um, um, Memorial. We have the chainsaw carvings. We have the we have the new pavers that are coming to do our paving that are going to be in town. We have the tree planters. We have so consultation. Didn't happen last year in 2018. These are all coming up in 2019. The hockey yeah, but did we have these in 2019? Yeah, but this one I think is going to be a little bit bigger because it's a special one. They're having a huge concert. I don't know. I'm just saying these are the projects that we're looking. Plus the big projects that are coming down the pipe. So that's just what we have to take in when we're thinking. That's just, just so. Go ahead. Yeah. Are there any crews that are told they have to go to camp as opposed to a hotel or a rental property? I believe there is. I believe Sereris Murphy was told that they have to stay in a camp. And that was from the pipeline, Trans, is it Trans, Trans, yeah. Trans Canada. Did you have uh, somebody that was recommended that they go stay at account? We had, yes. So we lost a company in 2018 that was told that they had to go to account. And we're a regular company. So, uh, yeah. So they had to leave our property and go to one of the properties here in town. But it's also always stated that people want to prefer to stay in a hotel. Really? When the company's telling them they have to go somewhere else because it's available. 
So can I just ask one more? Go ahead. Yeah. So the statistics that you're giving us, them are, that's just chat ones, right? That's not all of your Palmerites. That's just that's chat one Palmerite? Okay. Okay, uh, any more comments? Hearing no further comments, I declare the public proceeding proceedings concluded. So do you want me to make the recommendation? Uh, okay, well, I'll make the recommendation so we can get it on the table. The, I recommend that the council approve the issuance of the development permit number one, 2019 to flight, what? Pardon me? That's not what I was doing. RA3? RA2. Okay, well then I'll go to RA2. Well, what's the difference between RA2 and number three? Um, the temporary use permit, uh, it comes to us to make a decision on that. If, if the temporary use permit was denied, then we don't need to discuss the development permit. Gotcha, okay, so I'll make that recommendation that council authorize the insurance of the temporary use permit to flight camp and catering for the purpose of allowing temporary location of 166 person camp work camp on the property located at 4444th Avenue, Northeast Chetwin, BC for a period of up to three years. Discussion? Thank you. So I don't feel that I can support this decision tonight. I, um, there's just too many variables, unknown variables. We don't know where the future's taking us for one. Um, there's camps already proposed outside the municipality and the PRRD that are going to be housing their own crews. Um, if we're, they're expecting over 3,000 people, 166 rooms isn't going to make a huge impact, I, I don't feel. Um, our vacancy rates are, are low, and if the businesses are willing to adjust their restaurant hours to help accommodate meals and mornings and evenings. I think um, I, I would be okay with that. I think it's a great idea, and I think uh, I just can't I just can't support it at this moment. So I, Discussion. And I, I got to agree with some of the things Rochelle said. The only thing is with um, adjusting their hours. I don't think it's going to matter because if the people aren't going to be here, they'll be going through town. I think they'll be staying at another camp if we don't have a place for them to stay. So. Um, uh, that's the only thing. Uh, it's just not the projects that are coming. It's just so much that's going to be happening in Chetwin next year that I'm really concerned that we're going to lose the, the, the hockey teams. We're going to lose the special things that are going to be happening in our town. If we don't have rooms for them because they're going to be full of workers. But how, I don't know, how do you ever ask a hotel, though, to not give out rooms in case there's a hockey team coming? Uh, you can't do that, right? So it is, it's a really hard decision. It is, it's very difficult. And, and I agree with both of you, and, and the point of 166 rooms doesn't, it, that's not gonna accommodate all these people that are supposedly coming, so, so, so that. Direct your you comment know, I mean, to the chair. I, I lean on both, I lean both ways because what's wrong with it? It's only an, another 166, but then how could it, why would we vote it in then? It's only 166. It's very difficult. Discussion, Clay? Uh, when this issue first came up, I was definitely against the camps for, uh, for a few reasons. A couple, I'm not responsible to temporary workers. It's not up to me where they stay. Um, I'm responsible to the taxpayers in Chetwin. And when the town was full, I saw many assets or aspects of the town that wasn't functioning properly. Um, 
like hockey tournaments couldn't happen. Um, you know, new teachers in town, new employees to town, they had a hard time finding affordable housing or even rooms to rent. Uh, there's there's many things that, that didn't function. Also, there was a social aspect to it that concerned me. Uh, a lot of my concerns were deemed to be invalid. So the last time this issue came up, I, I reversed my decision and, and voted in favor of the camps. Not so much that I was in favor of them, but that I'm not opposed to them. I can think of probably 50 businesses uh, in the next five minutes that I'd rather have come to town than a, a temporary worker camp. But for me, it's a matter of am I opposed to it or am I not opposed to it? And if we need the accommodations, I'm not opposed to it. Um, beyond that, I'm not an economist. I don't know how many rooms are adequate in, in town. It's not up to me to decide if it's 400 is right or 600 is right. I really don't know. I'm either going to be voting against the camps or for the camps. It's, it's not a matter of a number. Any more discussion? My comment is uh, I've always believed that you go to the dance with the person and you leave with the dan that dance with that person. And my taxpayers is my, my only uh, care right now and the taxpayers that pay the bills in our town and that's our motels and hotels and that's my, uh, my, my opinion and that's where I stand on that. Any more discussions? Not hearing any. All those in favor of the proposal? All those, is that three? Yep. All those uh, opposing? So it's defeated. Okay, moving on, we are going to RA4, North Central Lo Local Government Association 2019 resolution. I would make that motion that council identify any resolutions it would like to forward for consideration to the 2019 uh, North Central Local Government Association convention and direct administration to prepare draft versions of resolutions of such resolu resolutions for consideration at the next council meeting. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, it's item number 11, RI1. Building permit. I'll make that recommendation. Okay, you heard me. Okay. For, to receive for information. All those in favor? Do we have any new business? Any new business? Public questions? Any public questions? Not hearing any? Item 14, adjournment. Okay, carried. Thank you.